Hi, NA Physics. It's Mr. Neff. Today, let's talk about the lens maker's equation. Before we do, did you hear about the optometrist that fell into the lens grinder? I'll talk about him at the end of the video. So if you've ever been to the eye doctor, uh, they figure out what's going on with your eye, whether it's focusing the light too quickly and you are nearsighted, or if it's focusing it too slowly and uh, you're farsighted, and then they are going to decide what lens would work for you. If, you. if you're having trouble seeing things far away, uh, they call you nearsighted and you need a diverging lens because your lens is focusing the light too quickly prior to your retina. And the opposite is true too. If you have trouble reading, seeing things close up, then you are farsighted and you, your lens is not focusing the light quickly enough to get it focused on your retina. And so you need a converging lens to make that whole process happen quicker. Well, they can figure out what, what size the, uh, the uh, focal length of your lens needs to be. But then they actually have to make a lens that is that size. And here's how that would be done. There's a thing called lens maker's equation. And the, uh, the lens maker's equation will be able to give you radii of curvature to be able to make a lens that is the right focal length. Now, a couple things before we get into the, into what the actual equation is. It's always assumed in the picture that the light is coming from the left, hitting the lens on the right, and that the very far right of each one of these pictures is the actual eyeball. So the eyeball is going to be back here. Okay, there's the lens in front of your eyeball. Here's the eyeball back here. Lens is in front of your eyeball. Okay, now, so the light's coming in. Now, the first side that it hits, that's if you're wearing eyeglasses, this is going to be the side of the, of the lens that's out towards the world. We're going to call that side one. And it has a certain radius of curvature. Either that radius of curvature is back behind, if it's shaped like this convex lens, or it's going to be shaped like this concave lens, and that radius of curvature of, of side one is going to be out in the world. Okay, so what I like to do, and it's, if it's okay with you, I'm going to erase this eyeball for now. Eh, I'll, I'll leave the other one for now. Uh, what I like to think of is I like to say, all right, so from the, the surface to the center, see I've drawn this arrow in here. If that arrow is going to the right, I call it positive. And if the arrow is going to the left, I call it negative. So I'm going to say that the first surface, this front surface that the light is hitting, and I'm calling it surface one because it's the first one the light's hitting, uh, I'm going to say that it's positive surface. It's got a center of curvature that's over on the right. At the same time, I, then the light hits the second surface, and the second surface has a center of curvature that's over on the left, and so it is, uh, it's, it's, are going to be a negative surface and so there it is now the opposite could be said about the the diverging lens over here on the right the light's going to hit it first surface it hits is this one here but now it has a center that's on the left and so i'm going to say that that's a negative surface negative curve and then the second surface is this one and it's going to have a positive curve okay now why does that make this what we call a positive lens and this what we call a diver a, a negative lens or a diverging lens. Why? Why? Well, the lens maker's equation looks like this. And it says that one over the focal length, aka the power of the lens, aka what your actually actual eyeglass prescription is going to be in, uh, is the reciprocal of the focal length. And so it is the index of refraction for the lens minus now here we say one because most lenses are they especially eyeglass lenses they function out in the air but this is actually the the uh, environment's index of refraction now contact lens is going to be surrounded by by uh, eye fluid uh, tears whatever you're going to call that and so that one wouldn't be one necessarily for a contact lens there's also a uh, kind of microscope that is going to have oil between the, the objective lens and the specimen. And then, so this wouldn't be one in that case either. All that is to say, that we're going to take that quantity and multiply it by 
those two radii. Remember, the radius one is the first surface, and we're going to see it on the left, and radius two is going to be the one on the right. You know, it could be shaped like either one of those, but there we go. Now, uh, look at something here. Why is a converging lens a positive lens? Because I'm going to take that radius one, so think about this, the power or the reciprocal of focal length is uh, n minus 1 times 1 over r1. Now, in this case, it's going to be a positive blah, 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 uh, minus 1 over r2, and it's going to be a negative blah, blah, blah. Now, you can see that all of that is going to come out to something positive. In contrast to that, if I did this exact same thing over with this one, it would be n minus 1 times uh, 1 over radius 1, now that's negative blah blah blah, uh, minus 1 over radius 2, positive blah blah blah, and all of that's going to come out negative, and so there we go. As I say, this gives us the power of the lens. How how strong the lens is, how quickly the lens will focus the light. And that's really what your eyeglass prescription is going to be in too. And so you might know your eyeglass prescription as negative one or positive four or something like this. You're talking about the power of those lenses and they're expressed in a unit called diopters, which are actually just reciprocals of meters. If you were to go to uh, to a store, here, I took this picture at Costco, here are some reading glasses that they sell over the counter. And the reading glasses will be labeled with positive blah, blah, blah. Well, reading glasses are converging lenses, and so they are going to have a power that's going to be positive some amount of diopters. It, if you had or a contact lens wearer, or if you were looking at your eyeglass prescription from the optometrist, if you were a... Uh, if you were nearsighted, then maybe you would see that on the contact lens, it would say uh, negative blah, blah, blah. Well, that's in diopters too. These are going to be diverging lenses. Okay, so now how does all of that work in practice? In this example, it says a glass converging lens, index of refraction 1.50, is designed to look like the lens in the figure. But I didn't draw the figure because I wanted, to, I wanted to bring it up. It says the radius of the first surface is 15 centimeters and the radius of the second surface is 10. It says find the focal length of the lens and determine the position of the image for object distances at infinity 3f, f, and f by 2. Okay, so if the radius of curvature is 15, then that means it's pretty far out to the center. And if it's pretty far out to the center, then that means it's pretty flat. So this is going to look something, first surface is going to be kind of flattish like that. Compared to the second surface, it's only going to be 10 centimeters to its center, and so it's going to look not nearly as flat. So I'm going to try to draw this one kind of a lot more bulgy like that. Uh, you, so over to this second surface's center, it's 10 centimeters, so we're going to say R2 is 10 centimeters, and a negative at that. And then over to the first surface of center, it's, it's a lot farther. And we're going to say R1 is positive 15 centimeters. And I call this one positive because it's going to the right versus the other one is going to the left. Okay, so what is focal length of this lens? Well, easy enough. The 1 over the focal length or, or the power of the lens is N minus 1 times 1 over radius 1 minus 1 over radius 2. And so I'm going to go 1.50 minus 1. I'm sure you probably would just do that in your head. And 1 over, that's going to be a positive 15 minus uh, 1 over negative 10. If you wanted to, you could probably do this one in your head. Common denominator is going to be 30. And so I have uh, 2 thirtieths and I have three thirtieths, and so that's going to be five thirtieths, which is um, one sixth. Half of that is going to be one twelfth. Now remember, that's not the answer. That's the reciprocal of the answer. And so it looks like the focal length is 12 centimeters on this. Now for part B, and I'm going to mostly let part B up to you. It's telling you for different DOs of infinity and 3F and F and so forth, then uh, where would the 
would the image be located? You're just going to use 1 over f equals 1 over do plus 1 over di to find those. Similar to that last one, this example says we have a diverging lens shaped like uh, this figure. But again, I didn't want to, to show the figure just yet. It's, I want to draw the figure. It says the radius of the first surface is 15 and the radius of the second surface is 10. Now, like I was just saying, if the radius is bigger, then that means it's going to be flatter. And so the first surface will be, I don't like that so much. Let me back that off. And I'm going to make it a little bit flatter. How about that? And the second surface a little bit less flat. So maybe more like that. Okay. And so there's our lens. Uh, radius 1 is, has its surface over here on the left, so I'll make it negative 15 centimeters, and radius 2 is on the right, and so we'll make it positive 10 centimeters. And so now all I have to do is say that 1 over the focal length is n minus 1 times 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2, and so that's going to be 1.5 minus 1 times 1 over negative 15 plus 1 over 10. I noticed a mistake on here. You should have stopped me while I was going. Uh, that should have been a negative, negative like that. And again, you could do this pretty easily in your head. This is going to be a 2 thirtieths and 3 thirtieths. And so it's going to be a negative 6 thirtieths times a uh, 0.5. Uh, uh, Mistakes are all over the place here. Negative 5 thirtieths like that. And so that's going to be a sixth and half of that is going to be uh, negative a twelfth. So now the uh, focal length is not that negative twelfth. The focal length is actually the reciprocal of that negative 12 centimeters. Hey, before we, we leave you, uh, did you hear about that optometrist that fell into the lens grinder? Uh, he made a spectacle of himself.